if you're new here, my name is Sam and I make videos about makeup, chronic illness and whatever I want. And today I'm going to be talking about a subject that I don't think a lot of people really think about and that is ableism. Ableism is discrimination that all of us do, even disabled people. It's something that's ingrained in us from society because society teaches us how we act and think. If you are not aware of what ableism means, it is discrimination in favor of able-bodied people. I could make a video about the ins and outs of what it is and how it's perpetuated through laws and things like that, but there are people who do that way better than I do, especially Amani Barber. I will link them down in the description. This video is strictly going to be about how it impacts my life and also my own internalized ableism and how my ableism makes me more disabled, basically. One thing that I really don't think gets talked about enough is disabled person is a minority that all of us will be a part of. That might be temporarily from an illness or injury, could be permanent from old age, or it could be like me where an unfortunate series of events led to me being permanently disabled from the age of 17 until I'm old. So I will just become more disabled as I age. But no matter what happens, it will happen. And this isn't a scare tactic. If hearing that you will one day become disabled scares you, you should think about why. And the pretty clear answer is how we treat disabled people. You don't want to be disabled, not just because you might lose out on something, because if we treated disabled people properly and gave them accessibility, your life would still be exactly what it is. You just have to do it slightly differently. I'm going to read this tweet quote I found one time that said, uh, you know, ableism is bad when most of the time disabled people <laughs> have to be like, hey, we exist. And people are like, no, we weren't talking about you. We were talking about people. And I really feel like that's how disabled people are treated. We're not people. And being disabled is hard, but not so much for the disability part. It's the people part. Disabled people are left out of almost every conversation, even the ones involving themselves. I can't even talk about my own life and the things I need to do to keep myself healthy without getting DMs while actually, like just shut up, just shut the fuck up. I wasn't talking about your life and don't act like you know what's best for me because my full-time job is taking care of myself and figuring out what does and doesn't benefit my well-being. People don't tend to realize that their attitude and their face tells me exactly what they think about me, and I don't even think they realize they're doing it a lot of the time. The eye rolls, the sneers, the under-breath comments, like, I know you don't respect me. I know that I am an annoyance, a burden, um, and make you uncomfortable. A lot of this comes down to uh, able-bodied people feeling entitled to disabled people. They feel entitled to our space, our time, our bodies. I hear countless stories about people in wheelchairs who have their wheelchairs moved by strangers, people on crutches or with canes who are just grabbed by strangers and helped across the street, which is assault, first of all. It is assault to put your hands on the body of someone who did not ask for it. But also, you feel like we are incapable of taking care of ourselves. You feel entitled to do what you want to do to us as if we are objects, and it's disgusting. Able-bodied people attempt to force us to do things we cannot or do not want to do. We are forced to explain our entire life, our story, our situation to strangers, to get approval and allowance to do things. Like parking in a handicapped space, people will get harassed. It's, it's never ending. It's overwhelming. And that is the thing that makes being disabled hard. It isn't my limitations. I can learn to work at my limitations. I can take precautions to prevent XYZ, but I cannot prevent harassment from strangers. 
and sometimes even the people in my personal life. Another way people feel entitled to me is by asking me what's wrong with me. How are you disabled? How is that debilitating? I don't think that's a disability. And then someone telling me, oh no, I know someone who has that and they can do X, Y, and Z. Like, disability is not linear. It affects everyone differently. And also, do you know they can do that? Or are they just masking so you won't harass them like you're harassing me? It isn't your business which what is wrong with me, how I became disabled. If I wanted to share that information with you, I would volunteer it. But you don't deserve to know. There is no right for you to know whether you are someone I know personally and it, you especially don't deserve to know if you're a stranger. I don't need to defend how or why I exist and you wouldn't ask any other person that so why are you asking us? People talk to me as if I'm less intelligent than them. They talk at me as if I couldn't comprehend. People feel entitled to treat me like I'm less of a person because I'm disabled and there was a recent situation that really sparked me wanting to make this video. Now, I had a friend, Ellie, hi if you're watching this, who actually requested I make a video about ableism months ago and I'm just getting around to it, but what really pushed me was this incident. I posted on Instagram precautions I will continue to take even though I am vaccinated because I'm high risk and the vaccine does not prevent COVID. It prevents serious cases of COVID. However, my lungs are so damaged that even a mild version could be incredibly dangerous for me to get. So I mentioned how I was still going to be following all of these precautions for that reason. And this person felt entitled to message me very rudely. I know this person in real life. I have not interacted with them much, but they proceeded to tell me how I don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm spreading misinformation, which is troublesome. Uh, they linked me to the CDC site to prove me wrong, but had they actually read the website they linked me, it actually agreed with me and not them. Uh, they accuse me of basically fear mongering by, by saying that the vaccine doesn't prevent COVID, but it literally does not. Like, I'm, I'm not making things up. I, I think everyone should get vaccinated because it will stop or slow down mutations. It will lessen your chance of getting COVID and it will lessen the severity of it if you do get it. But like the flu shot, like any other shot, it's not a cure. So for this person to come and explain to me that I clearly don't understand medical science, I'm spreading misinformation, I'm, who gave you the right? All I said was I was gonna continue to social distance and continue to wear masks because I still don't want to get COVID. And they felt entitled to come into my personal space and attack me. This is how able-bodied people treat all disabled people. And even if you do it nice with the smiley face and the exclamation points, like, hey, I just thought you should know, it's wrong. Something else I get quite frequently, if people aren't trying to de-educate me, they try to just discredit how, how disabled I am, as if it is some kind of competition, which is very bizarre to me, because there's not a limit on how many people can be disabled, but also, it's not a contest. I, I don't know who wants to have a chronic illness. I don't know who wants to do these things. So like, why would I make it a game with you? I get comments like, I get tired too. Oh, life is hard. Oh, I got really sick once too. And I get for a regular person, getting sick is severe. It is intense. I'm not discrediting that. However, these are not the same things. Yours goes away. Mine has not gone away. Just please don't compare them. And I understand that some people are trying to uh, sympathize, like, oh, I understand because I had X. But that's never how it comes off because that's never how they say it. It's always, well, I got sick and it wasn't that bad, so why are you complaining? That is always the implication I get. And it's incredibly frustrating. I have had people just assume that 
I'm just a little tired like a normal person who didn't get enough sleep and so I sit around and rake in the cash all day long and I take advantage of whatever I can and just like live a good life but then an example is like my neighbors they'll see me do an activity and this one in particular tends to think I can't be disabled because I did said activity but then will not see me for a week and wonder what happened and I try to explain over and over again yes I did the activity and then I had to recover for seven days I don't get to just do things every day my life is incredibly hard I did the math I have about five usable hours in my day imagine if your day was five hours long you have to eat, you have to do all your healthcare stuff. So take all your pills, medications, etc. You have to bathe yourself, you have to do whatever chores you have to do. And then add in if there's any kind of appointments or errands you need to do. You need to do all of this in five hours. The rest of my time is spent resting and recovering or asleep. So don't act like I have it such a good life. Like, oh, I can't do X because I have a job. I have a job too. It's taking care of myself. So next time you want to say that, just, just think about it. I have five hours to get things done. How many hours do you have to get stuff done even after you're done working? It's probably a little more than five. I have to say it's incredibly hurtful because the must be nice, I have a job often comes from people incredibly close to me which is painful because you've seen me struggling, you see how often I struggle and you see how difficult it is. So no, it isn't nice to not have a job. It wasn't nice to give up my entire future, the career, the traveling. I've given up everything. You can still do those things. Yes, you have to work around a work schedule, but I have to work around my unpredictable health. It's hurtful, it hurts a lot when it comes from anyone but especially people who you think understand and I, I get that sometimes reactions aren't necessarily about you they're about themselves their own feelings whether they're uncomfortable or fearful or maybe they are just envious because you're overworked and underpaid I get that but don't take it out on me I have nothing to do with that I'm also overworked and underpaid I don't I don't have help I don't even have full benefits. I don't have dental or vision. I have to neglect parts of my health because I can't afford to do it. And no, it's not just, okay, don't buy makeup or whatever. That Like, that's not it because I can't plan for a cavity. I don't know when that's going to pop up. Also, I don't think people who have low incomes or live in poverty don't deserve nice things and should save every penny for an emergency because that leads to an awful existence. So if that's your mindset, just keep it to yourself because people already feel bad. Now, instead of just harassing other people in this video, I get it's kind of brutal, but how many years has it been now? 14 years I have been dealing with this, 14 years of rude comments, harassment. I'm a little heated, you could say. But I'm going to move on now to my own internalized ableism and roast myself for a few minutes because I'm not innocent. Whether it's ableism projected towards other people or myself, usually myself, um, let's just talk about that for a minute. My own desperation and internalized ableism is actually how I became more disabled than I probably would have been. I went into a small remission period after a prolonged, like a couple of years of constant rest. I was in bed for about 20 hours a day for like two or three years. I did physical therapy, chiropractor, I did a ton of stuff and it led me to remission. Well, I didn't actually know what I was sick with at that time. And once I did find out, nobody told me how to uh, really manage it. It was you know early so I just thought I was cured and I hit the ground running I overdid it I tried to make up for all my lost time I tried to get right back on the horse and uh, that set me crashing down further than I was before I had to drop out of college I had everything I ever dreamed about went up in smoke because I tried to live life as a normal person instead of a disabled person because I was ashamed 
and horrified that I might be disabled and I wasn't going to accept that. And now here I am more disabled than I was when I first got sick. I still find myself regularly mentally punishing myself for being lazy. I should do more. I should get up and do blah. I should, I should, I should, I should. No, I should be taking care of myself. I should be listening to my body. I should be resting. I should be pacing. But my entire life I have been taught otherwise by everyone and everything around me. It's a hard habit to break because even though I'm fighting against it, it's, it's still being shoved in my face that that's what I should be doing. Like, oh, you only did that thing. Oh, you only did blah. I have had comments from people like, oh, you're, you're taking a break already. You just started. You just, and so I find myself pushing myself further than I should because I don't want the confrontation. I don't want to have to explain myself to other people. I just, I don't want the attention. And that's really what it comes down to, trying to hide yourself because of all this unwanted negative attention. So I find myself, I'll be dizzy with in horrible excruciating pain and trying to push through a project just so nobody will ask me, oh, a break already? It's hard because I don't owe anyone an explanation and I definitely owe myself the respect to rest. However, people sometimes just don't take no for an answer. Like, yes, I'm resting already because I need to. I have a heart condition. I get dizzy. I'm tired. I have weak muscles. I'm disabled. And the last time I said that to somebody, yes, I'm taking a break. I'm disabled. The comment was, you can't be disabled. You shop too much. Yeah. Disgusting. You don't know what I do at the store. You don't know how often I rest in the car. And that's often why my shopping trips tapes, take so long is, you know, if I have to go into more than one place, I need to rest between stores. So I just sit. I sit and I rest. I'm not shopping the whole time. I have to explain myself to everyone, including strangers. I have to explain and defend my existence. I have to ask for forgiveness and permission from people I've never met and will never see again. I give in. I give in almost every time because it breaks you. It just breaks you after a while. I give in so often to the ableism of others so I can avoid confrontation that I just hurt myself and I don't have anyone else to blame but me I suppose but honestly it's on the other people other people who can't mind their business the weird thing is I find myself even defending myself to the people who don't ask the people who know my situation understand my situation I still defend it I I'm like oh I guess I'm only doing x today because of y and they're kind of just like yeah, you should be rusting. There was one time that, uh, right when I got the lung thing in 2017, I had to use a motorized cart and like the horrible stares and looks I got have made me never want to use one again. Even when I have probably needed one, I pushed through it because I don't, I didn't like how I was treated. And to be fair, that was just one store and it was around a holiday, so people were just in a mood. But that just sticks with you. It just does. I tend to think of myself as a burden, a chore, a charity. Why? Because at some point someone has told me I'm one of those things. Someone, somewhere. And you know, they haven't always said that to my face, but things always have a way of getting back to you. Trust me, if you've said it about me, someone has told me. I've been told that if I really wanted to get better, I would try harder. I would be a vegan. I would try this multi-level marketing scheme. I would try an extra vitamin. I would do more. I have two things to say to that. Um, first of all, I have tried literally everything. I gave myself an eating disorder. I've tried every scam, scheme, pill, diet, exercise, food. I've tried it all and nothing works because, you know, um, that isn't uh, the problem. The problem is I got an infection and it uh, ate my brain. That's the thing. It got into my brain and caused damage. And removing meat or 
taking vitamin C, which I already do, is not going to cure me. And the, the second thing is maybe stop being so disgusted with disabled people that you wish they didn't exist because suggesting everyone cure themselves is kind of suggesting eugenics. Being disabled wouldn't be hard if it weren't for ableism and capitalism, but that's another story. I'm not ashamed of being disabled, but other people try to make me feel ashamed. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't need to punish myself for being the way that I am, and neither does anyone else. People in wheelchairs don't wish they could walk. They wish you respected them. They wish they had accessibility to buildings. I've also been told some weird things, like in my videos I sound depressed, sad, like a downer because I don't have the energy or desire to be one of those fake peppy YouTubers. It's an act. I hope you realize those people aren't like that in real life either. Like the way you see me, I'm talking to you like if we were sitting in my living room because I don't want to be a character. I'm here to be myself. And it's just another ableist thing. You want me to act a way that makes you feel comfortable instead of doing what's comfortable for me, which is not expending all of my energy to be here when I'm just here. Um, something that people think they say to, to be polite, to mean well, but it, it's never that because you wouldn't say it if, if you meant well. Uh, being told, I hope you get better. I hope they find a cure. I hope you can lead a normal life. Why don't you hope that the world is just more available and accessible to disabled people? Uh, I wouldn't need to get better if doctors took me seriously and we found treatments to maintain my health. I wouldn't need a cure if people didn't harass me. I would be perfectly fine if I had access to all the things I needed. So hoping there's some kind of miracle to cure a uh, brain damage, basically, rather than hoping people get better, is pie in the sky. And it lets me know that you don't like disabled people. You don't want them to exist. You want them to go away to make you feel comfortable. But I just want to remind you that soon, one day, you will be one of us. And people are gonna treat you the way that you're treating disabled people right now. So maybe you should hope for better for disabled people because it, it's gonna happen. Rather than hope for a change that literally can't exist. Just to really end this, uh, I don't get to live my life without harassment. I don't get to live my life without the input and opinions and ideas forced upon me by other people, especially strangers. Strangers feel really entitled. Uh, every time I've used a wheelchair, someone's asked, stopped and asked why I was in a wheelchair. Okay, well, why does your face look like that? That would be rude, right? How about you just mind your own fucking business? But that's truly what makes being disabled hard. It isn't the disability, it's the people. It's traumatizing. It's the only way to summarize it. I'm sure this won't be the last video I make about the subject. I just, after that DM recently, I just really wanted to get on here and just like drive home how people think they get to interact with me. Why do you feel entitled to, not just me, to any disabled person? Because it's not just me. I know <laughs> all of us face problems like this. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I make videos every Friday. Uh, this is, you know, obviously not a fun, cheery video. I hope it gave you something to think about and I hope that I have planted a seed in all of you and maybe a little reminder to myself of how we treat other people. Sometimes we say and do things that we don't even think about. So, my advice is to just think before we speak and think before we act, including myself. I am not free of guilt in this situation. I, I have thought ableist things about other people, but the worst target is towards myself. And it's something I have to work on every day of my life. And I hope that every day of your life, you 
at least try to stop ableism in yourself. We can't fix everyone, but we can fix ourselves. I'll see you guys next time.